Come on, guys. Hi. Excuse me. Hello. Hi guys, it's Megan. How are you? I'm so sorry I am late to my own stream. Um, hi Leah, how are you? It's nice to see you. <laughs> I know you had asked me to get on and make another live stream and here I am. And the dogs are super excited per usual because <laughs> Alfie wants to be brushed. Um, and welcome Jessica. Thanks so much for coming, you're new here. Um, how did you find me, by the way? <laughs> it's nice to see you. Um, so Alfie and all of the babies got their weekly bath yesterday. And um, after they get a bath, I usually have a scrunchie in their hair. So they have like little, I get little tiny, don't roll off my lap, Alfie, little tiny like child size scrunchies. And that way they don't get um, sharp little marks in their hair and after their hair is totally dry then I comb it out and I have a bag of really pretty neon elastics because I love neon colors. Are you coughing Lola? Are you okay? I don't know. I'm sure you guys can hear Lola's. <laughs> She's coughing right now. Poor little Lola's. Um, oh my gosh you saw your Yorkie puppy yesterday. That's so exciting. Um, are you in love? <laughs> Alfie is just going to get a little brush in here. He, they always get so excited about... Lola, oh, come here, honey. Are you okay? Lolies. Lolies. Come on. It's okay. Oh, and Simba. Simba has been gently trying to play attack the dogs lately, and they don't like that. It's okay, honey. Are you okay? You got a little coffee? It says, I'm going to bring it a little bit closer because my eyes are not that good. Lola is okay. Just so you guys know, she does cough like this sometimes. And you can see her down there. Um, I don't know if she ate. Can you see the cat <laughs> trying to get Lola? I don't know if she ate a dust bunny or something, but she she is going to be fine, though. Um, she's a run. So is Lola. She's six weeks and not even a pound. And we are getting her about March 20th. Oh, that's so exciting. Um, Jessica, Yorkies are my favorite dogs too. I love them so much. Poor little Lola though. Come here, honey. Maybe, Alfie, can we take a little break? Lolies, come here. Come on, honey. Why are you coughing like that? Come on. Why don't you just sit with me? I'm going to pat your little back. Come on. You're a good girl. I think she might be excited because we're streaming. Um, sometimes when Lola gets excited, her little trachea collapses a little bit and I think they all actually are starting to like streaming although the first time I think the first time that I live streamed was last week and Poppy was so she was sort of upset about it she was hiding in the background and then she was sort of like hiding for um you know the next day too I think she was still nervous they just didn't like that I was talking to my computer and they didn't see somebody talking back to me so, um, oh my goodness, where did I put my comb when you came up here, you cutie pie? I'm probably sitting on my comb. This frequently happens to me. Um, I use, I'm sure you guys have seen the grooming tools that I use, but I have a, a bigger comb that I use at first. So it's a little bit bigger at the top. It's a little bit finer at the bottom. And then I have a super fine one that I actually use to clean out their eyes. And I have this really nice, it's actually getting stuck in my own really long hair. Um, I have this rat tail comb that I use when I put in their ponytails, little band scissors so that I don't cut their hair when I'm taking out their elastic bands. And then of course I have the bands too. <laughs> you guys are so cute. Yorkies are definitely super, super cute. It says you're getting her when she's 10 weeks old. Um, so, I um, I would not give her a bath right away. Um, so when you're bringing home a Yorkie, it's definitely, even though it's really exciting for you, it's, it's honestly, they say that the day that a new puppy comes home is like the most traumatic day. And I'm just telling you this so that you can be understanding of the puppy. So it's, 
you definitely want to be very, very gentle. Um, just try to do really soothing activities for your puppy when you first bring it home. Because the important thing to remember is that it has been with its family and its siblings and things like that. And so the first day that it's home, it's going to really miss its family. It's going to miss its mom and its siblings. So you just want to do everything that you can to make your new Yorkie puppy as comfortable as possible. Um, and bath time isn't usually a dog's favorite time. So I would personally probably wait a week or two at least before I would give your dog a bath. Um, you can always take a nice damp paper towel and just clean them off where you need to spot clean. Um, but I would give your puppy a little bit of time before you give it a bath. Um, and also it's really important that you use a good dog shampoo because human shampoos don't have the correct pH balance for um, a Yorkshire Terrier. So you could dry out its skin and, and things like that. Um, I feel like I need to wear my glasses when I, wear, when I make videos or I need a larger computer screen. Um, and is it L, L, sing to, L sing to the king? Oh no, I sing to the king. I'm so sorry <laughs> to read it twice. Um, it says, love watching your channel. Thank you so much. Um, I recently adopted a seven month old Yorkie. That is so awesome. Congratulations. And also thank you for adopting a Yorkie because that is an excellent way to do it. I love that. Um, he's the sweetest. His name is Shelby and your channel has been so helpful. Oh, that makes me so happy. Um, so guys, definitely the reason that I do this channel is that I love Yorkies so much and I especially spent a lot of time learning about Yorkies when I had a very sick Yorkie because um, he was my very best friend in the world. And I knew that every single thing that I learned about Yorkie health and care and making him comfortable would, would be able to prolong his life. And I just, I wanted to take care of him the way that he took care of me because he was, he just never let me down. He was always my companion. He was happy to see me every day. And, um, he was just, he, it was Teddy and he was the best dog ever. So I learned a lot in that time. And I really love to bring some, some great facts that are good for not only Yorkies, but a lot of, I, I think specifically small dogs, they do apply to all dogs, but I think small dogs are a little bit different because they're sassier. Um, they're often a little bit more energetic and spirited. So, you know, Yorkies and small dogs. So anyway, love bringing you guys the information and it makes me really happy when, um, you know, like when someone tells me that they got pet insurance because I talked about pet insurance, that makes me really happy because I know that they are never going to be in a situation where they won't be able to afford to care for their dog because they will have insurance, which is important. Um, I would love to hear more about Shelby as well. And if you have any other questions too, um, please definitely let me know. It says, can you tell us what are the best toys for Yorkies? Um, so such an interesting thing. I feel like I can actually, I'm just going to finish up doing Alfie's sort of grooming and everything. And I can actually, if you want, I'll pull my toy bin out and I'll just talk about some of the different toys that I have for my Yorkies. Um, it's so interesting be, and I can, I can actually add, if you guys like particular toys, what I will do is I will go on because I'm going to... I'm going to build like a master sort of link, um, I, like a dis, uh, I don't even know how to say it, a list of a bunch of my favorite products for Yorkies because I've done so much research and that way you guys won't have to spend as much time on the internet as I have to find things that work. Um, I think that toys for dogs are a really funny thing because sometimes a toy can seem like it's going to be, you know, the absolute best thing in the world. And then you give it to your dog. Hi, Alfie. Hi, buddy. Um, you give it to your dog and your dog could care less about it. Um, so it really, really depends on the toy. And I find like some of the toys that are very trendy that look like, I don't know if you guys have seen, but they look like little designer handbags or, you know, different things. I don't find that my dogs usually like those. They're super cute and the idea of them is cute, but they're not crazy about them. Um, I'm actually going to, I'll step over and get the toy bin and I'll talk about it while I brush. Um, yes, a lot of toys are huge and I feel like they don't really like huge toys for sure. Um, yay, Coco the hamster. I'm so glad that you made it to one of my lives. Um, I'm, what I'm thinking about doing is actually just doing a regular time because I want 
I feel like I've been really sporadic about it because I've been so busy. And um, so I want to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm trying this time. I feel like Sundays are a good day for me because I'm not working. Um, I get my gym time out of the way in the morning and my, my work that I have to do in my organization. And then I can be like a little bit calmer just to sit down in room and talk to you guys. Um, I'm thinking I might do one in the evenings too. Um, mostly in the evenings, I just like relax with the Yorkies and with my kitten and we hang out. But I think that could actually be a really fun time to chit chat. I'm just going to pick up this little guy. We're not done because he's kind of tangly and I'll get my toy bin. Come on, buddy. We're going to pick this up. Okay, so this is my toy bin. It is overflowing and sometimes Alfie actually gets into the toy bin. I'm sorry, buddy. He gets into the toy bin and he takes out the toys himself. I know, you see your toys. Um, so I'm gonna pull out some different toys and talk about them. And I'll kind of tell you guys like what my dogs really like. Um, so one funny thing is that because I have three dogs, a lot of times if there's a very popular toy. I have to buy so many. Sometimes I'll only buy three, but there's actually, what are you doing, Moles? Honey, are you okay? Come here, baby. It's okay. Come here. Come on, sweetie. What's wrong with you? It's okay. Um, so that's, it's still poor little Lola. I don't know if she maybe, she could have eaten a piece of cat food. I'm not sure. Um, and she doesn't, Lola doesn't have any teeth. Um, I'm just looking at these as well as I go. Um, Oh, it says because your puppy is really small because she's a runt. Just like Lola. Lola's super small too. So they need really, really small things. So um, Leah, I'm going to put a link in as well to the harnesses that I use. Um, oh, poor Lola. She hasn't done this in so... Simba, be nice to her. Be nice to Lola. Um, she hasn't done this in so long. And now, poor little thing, she's doing it a lot. It's okay, baby. It's okay. You need her grooming a lot too. Um what is the difference between a cotton coat Yorkie and a silky coat? Um, so kind of funny. Uh, I would say that, and I'm so sorry. I, I think I have a cat hair or, or a Yorkie hair on my, on my eyelash, which is driving me crazy. I might go fix it in a minute. So I would say that to me, a silky hair Yorkie is more like Alfie that I'm brushing right now. I would definitely say has a cotton coat. Um, when he was a show dog, it, it was made to look like he had more of a silky coat and it was really, the, oh my gosh, the cat is a little bit, don't be mean, don't be mean to my Lola. Come here. Yeah, you go up here and you leave, leave Lola alone. Um, so Alfie definitely has more of a cotton coat. It's, it really sticks together. It's not very shiny. Um, he has so, so much hair that it's hard to brush through him. Um, and my Poppy, who you'll see after, I can actually, like, this baby, oh, she has a bone in her mouth. Let's see if she'll, oh, oh <laughs> there's Poppy. Um, so Poppy, I would say, has a silky coat. It's very, very easy to brush. It's never tangly. It just lays so smooth. Lola, maybe you should go drink some water, honey. Maybe you should drink some water. Um, so that is the difference. Hi, Sharon, and... Ooh, is it Sparkle Joy? I love that. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us. I really, really appreciate it. It's so nice to chat with you guys. Yes, I have so many toys in my toy bin. I'm going to show you guys those in just a minute. And hello, Claudia. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me. And also, I'm so happy that you guys like my Yorkie time, my story time lives. Um, I think these are so much fun. It's so much more fun for me just to chit chat with you guys live um, because I feel like it's so hard to answer. I love your comments. So please keep writing your comments as well, because a lot of times I will, you know, get out my phone or my iPad and actually read, you know, read those out and answer them, which I enjoy doing. But it's also really nice to um, just be able to chat with you guys. Okay, so this is one toy that my Yorkies have. The toy is about as big as my Yorkies. So I'm just going to show you Alfie, poor guy, and then we'll flip him back. 
But even though this is a really big toy, they will drag this toy around sometimes and they actually really like this toy. I have a big version of it and a small version of it. I think the small version is better, but I, I think the big version is really, really cute. So there is the large version and there is the small version. So it's just a little lamb chop toy and they love this. It's got, I think it's got, a, oh yeah, it's got a squeaker in it. Is that yours? Is that yours? Do you want that? You're a good girl. So Lola just took it. She likes that toy. Um, that is a super, super cute toy and they do like it. They, they pick up random toys sometimes and they wind up absolutely loving them. So this toy, like if you can see, I swear I put these in the washer all the time. It's a Christmas mitten toy. And this is Alfie's favorite toy in the world. It, like he's so sad if someone takes this, I'm like, is this your mitten toy? Do you want to hold your mitten toy? You can hold it while I groom you. He's actually like so excited right now just that I'm taking this toy out. So sometimes you get, I think someone must have given me that. I, I don't think I bought a mitten toy, but Alfie is crazy about that mitten toy. He treats it like it is his baby. Are you, are you okay? Okay, you're okay. She's making funny noises. Sorry about that guys, just checking on her. Um, so Kiana, how are you? It says, I watch these videos on my Yorkie puppy Bambi. I love her name. That's so great. That was my favorite movie while grooming her. But yes, I'm guessing she will be a cotton coat. Thank you for explaining. That helped a lot. So, and you know, the thing about if say your Yorkie has a cotton coat. So here's a funny thing. Um, I'm a, I don't know how many of you guys know this, but I'm actually so my business that I do during the day is that I am a hairstylist. I've been a hairstylist for 20, I think about 21 years now. This this whole year just passed so quickly. And you know, my thing is this, any kind of coat that your Yorkie has is great and it's just fine. Oh, she's she and Simba, I don't know if you guys can see, they're fighting a little bit. Let's see if we can just show you guys. Um, they're, <laughs> Lola's, Lola is super tough and she just tells the kitten to go away. So she's fine, but she's like, Lola is my sassiest Yorkie. And she tells him and bosses him around all the time. It's totally hysterical. Um, but anyway, so if you do have a cotton coat Yorkie, it's really, it's not a bad thing. You might just need a slightly thicker conditioner. And what is it? <laughs> <laughs> they're being so loud. I'm sorry. But one really good thing to do as well is to use a good detangler when you are grooming. Um, I can definitely at some point pull out some of my different products and just show you guys. I have basically whatever dog coat you have on your Yorkie, you just need to find products. <laughs> There's just a big kitten dog fight going on at my feet, but you just need to find products that work for your dog and with its coat, just like you would for your own hair. Like I have very thick um, curly hair. You can kind of see, I didn't quite get to my entire blow dry today. And um, so I use really moisturizing things, but somebody with very fine hair might use something lighter so that they don't weigh their hair down. Um, says, um, I, I can hear one of your dogs coughing in the background. My puppy does the same thing earlier today. It got so bad to where it scared me. Um, Sharon, thank you so much for commenting. So that is Lola's trachea and it sometimes does that. It's, she also has pancreatitis and just every once in a while it can get exacerbated and it could be the smallest thing. Like today, the cat sort of flicked some of his cat food down. And I do think that she ate some of the cat's cat food and that can set it off. Um, I don't know if you've seen your vet, but um, tracheal collapse is pretty common in Yorkies. So um, I'm sure you're already doing this, but just make sure you're using a harness. And um, I do think that some dogs get medicated for it. She has not done it a lot in so long, but if it is scaring you, don't be shy about going to your vet because it's, it's always a great thing to, you know, to do. I also tend to Google any conditions that I have. Um, of course I go to my vet too, but I, there's a vet online that I absolutely love. His name is Dr. Dobius. It's D-O-B-I-S. And he sells supplements, but he also writes blogs. So any problem that my dog is having, I just like to Google that issue with his name and see if he's done a blog that has any suggestions for, oh, wow. You guys, oh my 
goodness, they've never done this. I think they're showing off for you guys. I honestly do. So sorry about <laughs> the fight that's happening during my live stream. But um, this says um, it's from Cla or <laughs> Leah, that small lamb chop is bigger than my puppy. Um, I bet it is. Um, but I'll show you some other toys. Probably a lot of toys are going to be really big for your puppy in the beginning. Um, and this is from Claudia. It says, I was expecting to get a puppy in April. The mama... <laughs> The mama was due on the 25th this month, but she went into labor yesterday and she was supposed to have five puppies, but only had one. The vet was unsure of what happened. Oh, Claudia, I'm so sorry that that happened. So does that mean that you're not getting a Yorkie? Um, I think, I feel like just like with human moms, you know, sometimes, sometimes dog moms lose their puppies too, or maybe some, it, as it turns out, maybe some, you know, dogs are not able to be bred. Like I know that um, Poppy was actually owned by the show breeder and she was a show dog and she just felt that she was too small to be bred and that it wasn't going to be safe. I mean, Poppy's five pounds, but she said she likes her dogs that are going to have babies to be larger because she thinks it's safer for them. So it may just be that the mom was not, you know, of the proper size or something like that. It's always hard to say, um, but I'm really sorry that that happened. That is really sad. Um, you're, oh, you're getting, so Coco the hamster, you're getting a party Yorkie um, around March 7th. That's so excited. I love party Yorkies. There is a client of mine who um, has a party Yorkie and he is like the best behaved dog I've ever seen in my entire life. He travels with her to Europe. And I mean, I don't think she's traveling so much now, but he is amazing. And he comes into the salon and she has this bag that opens and he just lays on the bag the entire time. And just, he doesn't even try to move or do a single thing. Um, and this is Miss, I'm so sorry, Miss, Miss, P hunky. And guys, if I'm getting your names wrong, please tell me. I really, I may start wearing my glasses. I always just feel self-conscious when I do. Um, it says, I, I have to say that I am absolutely, that I absolutely adore you and your lifestyle. Your Yorkies are so sweet, nice, smart, and beautiful. Thank you so much. That's so, so nice of you. Um, you guys just make me feel so comfortable to chat with you. And it is such a welcoming environment. And there are so many nice people on here, which is like what encourages and motivates me to come on and talk to you guys. So first of all, I just encourage, and I mean, I appreciate your kind words because that, that makes me feel great. So thank you so much. That's really nice. I have a nice quiet lifestyle. I enjoy my pets and, um, I have an amazing husband that you guys probably haven't really seen too much, but he, my husband, Jeff is in Aspen and he's like my dream guy. Um, we're away from each other during the winter and then we're together for the rest of the year. So I have a great life. I love my life and I love all my babies so much. Um, hi Lola. Lola's at my feet. Um, and so you also said that you live in Germany with your sweet 13 year old daughter. That's so cute. And our two cats. And we got the sweetest Yorkie girl last October. We are very happy. And she is such a blessing. Congratulations. That's amazing. And your kids must be so happy. Um, my mom had a Yorkie when I was growing up and she was the best dog ever. Her name was Heidi. And I feel like having a dog is so important for kids. And also during this time, is so important because it just brings you so much happiness and you're never bored when you have a dog. It's, it's wonderful, you know, unconditional love. So you are also saying our little York Yorkie girl is five months now and everything is great. She is sassy, smart, and such a lovely dog. The only thing, the only thing is I am so bad with her fur. Um, so it's so funny, you know, a lot of people say that, and I think it's, you know, I, I don't know how to say it. I guess you just have to get in a habit because I feel like what a lot of people do is they sort of wait to brush their Yorkies for so long that then their Yorkies have knots. And by the time your Yorkie has a knot, it's not very fun to groom them. Um, so I think if you just, it, it's like, you just really have to schedule it into your day and leave the brushes and combs and things like that somewhere that you can reach them easily and just make it a habit. If you, if you're a morning person, I think it's great to do it in the morning. Um, I tend to do their grooming a little bit later on just because my mornings are really busy and I have been working so hard on my fitness. Um, and just like, 
I find that when I go to the gym, I feel a lot better and calmer and just everything is better when I go to the gym. So I've been doing that first thing in, in my day. So I haven't done the grooming before that because I just like feed them and do a couple of morning things. And I try to go to the gym before I get any excuses. So for me, I tend to do it after I come home, have my lunch and shower. And I do it before our walk. So they don't mind it because they know that we're going to go out and they're really, and they're excited about that. I just sort of combine it with something that they enjoy. Um, I, I just always think like the the more that you groom, the the more comfortable it is. And I just don't want to pull them and have them have snags and things. So I don't know if that's helpful at all. But just like, you know, maybe set set a timer for 10 minutes a day and say, I'm just going to get whatever I can get done in 10 minutes. And, you know, some is better than not doing any. And, you know, actually, you can definitely teach your kids to do it, too. I think it's a great thing um, for kids to have that habit of having, you know, a little chore and learning how to groom a dog gently. And it does also, um, it improves your relationship with your dog too, because you're, you know, you're sitting with your dog, you're holding them and you're making contact. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but sometimes we get so, so busy that if we don't really make time for something like this, we might be with our dogs all the time, but not be really present. Um, and I like, I like grooming. I think it's really, it's relaxing and it's just like, it's a time where I get to connect with my dogs. So anyway, that's kind of how I think of it. I don't know if that's helpful at all. Um, Leah says, what, what shampoo and conditioner do you recommend? Um, so I am going to put those in my, my master list. I actually, Leah, if you look at my video and it is, um, it's a small dog, I think it's small dog accessories video. I've got that all on there. Um, so I will include that link. There's two different shampoos and conditioners that I really like. Um, but if you guys like the idea of that, I'm definitely going to do a master list just so I might just put it on every video and it's going to be a lot of links, but that way um, you guys won't have to search for links. Um, and for anybody that doesn't know, I am an Amazon affiliate, which means that one of the ways that I um, fund my videos and my photo equipment and all of that is that when people buy products that I post about that I love on Amazon, I get a small commission on it. So if you are going to buy something, I would so appreciate it if you go through my link because it helps me to make my videos actually um, part of my career, which is really exciting. So I can obviously make more videos because it, it becomes a professional thing for me where I can chat with you guys, but also um, make money, which is so exciting. So I can pay for my various dog things that I need, right? Okay. I just want to show you guys another thing. So this is like one of the all time favorite dog toys. This is a little Kong tennis ball and it's teeny tiny so you can see like my i have very small hands and just to show you with my hand it's like you know it's about half the size of my pinky and i have very tiny hands it's got a squeak so everybody's crazy i'm gonna throw it back this way do you want to go get it lola lola will get it for sure she may not bring it back to me but she will get it that is a great toy all of my dogs love it and even my cat loves it too so that is probably the most popular toy that I have for everyone is that little squeaky Kong toy. Um, so I totally love that one. I'm of course gonna show you guys more, but don't, no, don't wiggle away. I don't want you to fall, okay? Don't wiggle away. Um, I just wanna look and see what is coming out at the same time. Um, this says, from it's from Claudia. Hi, Claudia. The breeder has not told us yet if the ones if we are the ones to get to bring him home, yes, she was very little, so she had a C-section. And, you know, the, the way I think, I know this isn't probably what you want to hear because I'm sure you want that puppy, but if it doesn't work out, um, <laughs> Alfie, I need to get your little eye boogers out. Come on. I got to get the eye boogers out. Stay still. Um, if it doesn't work out, I, I always look at it like, and I know this is a funny one, but everything happens for a reason. So if for some reason that is not your dog, it means that your dog that is your best companion is coming at a different time. I swear I've always had this happen in my life where one thing doesn't work out and then it'll be really scary and I'm, I'm thinking it's not gonna be good, but something fabulous will happen. Um, and that is actually what happened with 
my husband. So I had a boyfriend for, I hope this isn't too many stories, but I had a boyfriend for four years and he was just, you know, I don't know how to say it. He didn't want to make a commitment and I wanted to get married and he, you know, just, he just didn't want a commitment. And so we finally broke up. He broke up with me on a post-it note um, or no, no, I'm sorry. It wasn't a post-it note. That was Sarah Jessica Parker. He broke up with me in a text. I was thinking of Sarah Jessica Parker. I was on my way to New York and he said, you know, this isn't working out. So I was really sad, but I just, um, also thought, well, he's kind of a jerk because who breaks up with someone in a text after four years? So I just said to myself that if that's what's going to happen, this is not the right person for me and there must be something amazing coming. And eight months later, I walked into, um, I went skiing for the weekend, walked into a ski shop and there was this beautiful, beautiful man with a beautiful smile. And that was actually my husband, Jeff. And um, Jeff was so cute. And as soon as he met me, he, he really liked me and he asked me to go skiing and things like that. And now it is, come on, we got to put the rest of your hair up, you handsome guy. So now it is six years later and we're married. Um, so anyway, the other guy wouldn't even talk about getting married and looking back on it, he was not the right guy to get married to. Um, but I wound up marrying Jeff and my husband is like, the sweetest guy in the world. He loves our Yorkies so much and just treats them super, super well, even though Alfie does naughty things to my my husband's possessions sometimes. And so anyway, um, long story, just that things usually tend to work out perfectly the way they're supposed to. So just try to like keep faith that if it doesn't work out with this puppy, something, something great is going to come your way for sure. Sharon. Hi, Sharon. It says, I love your spirit. Thank you so much. You are so soft-spoken and calm to where your puppy's spirit is the same. Thank you for sharing. I did take her to the vet. You are correct. She is on pills right now. I think that's really, really good. And I'm assuming you have her on a harness as well. Um, I don't know, you know, too much about the trachea because I know it's anatomy. Um, I do think that Lola's tracheal collapse has not been as bad since I also started giving her different food. So I feed her just food for dogs. And I don't know if it made a difference, but I did notice she does it less frequently with that food. So um, it might be worth seeing too, if there might be any food allergies and, and things of that nature. Um, but that was my experience with Lola. I always get dog hair on my nose when I'm grooming. So I'm sorry to be doing that to my nose. Okay, so these are toys that my dogs love so much. These are these little, um, they have no stuffing, but and they do have a squeaker. Lola's down there going crazy. Is this your toy? Is this your toy right here? Is this your toy? So we have this one. And then I think Alfie's going to want this. I don't want you to jump. So here, Alfie, I'm going to give you this one. And I'll just show you guys a few more similar toys. So I have... Oh, I go a little toy crazy. I'm not going to lie. I also have this one, same thing. And they're not too, too big. My Yorkies don't have a problem carrying these around in their mouths. This one has almost, I think a little bit of, no, I thought it would crinkle, but it doesn't. This one's like a little, I think it's a polar bear or something. Um, is this your polar bear? Is that yours? There you go. Um, so those are some of their very, very favorite toys. I have more that I'm going to show you as well. Um, this is another repeat because why not just have two huge toys for your dogs, right? Um, and we have another one. Oh, this is the one. So it cranked. Oh, did, was that, did dog fur just fall off of this toy? I do think it did. Okay. So we're just going to put this to the side. I don't know where that came from. Maybe I was holding it in my hands, but um, so um, Miss, Miss, Oh, it's Miss Funky. I swear to God, I said Miss P. Hunky. I'm so sorry. I can read. It's just hard to, um, <laughs> it's hard to figure out things. Sorry, quickly. Got it. Miss Funky. I've watched your videos, but it's impossible to get these products here. What would you recommend for a puppy to get the hair to grow like you? Should I bring her first to a dog groomer? Um, well, so your dog really isn't that old right now. And 
what do you do? You, what are you doing? My cat is just being so funny. He's hanging out for the video. So your dog is pretty young right now. I think you said she's five months old. Their hair, I feel, grows in really, really fine. They're fighting over a toy. Um, it grows super, super fine at first. Do you see them playing tug of war? Let me see if I can move my kitten. Wait. They were. She's So Lola, even though she has no teeth, is taking the toy. Um, so really, I think it's a matter of time of waiting. I think it's up to you. You can take your dog to the groomer. I, I don't think five months old is a bad time to bring your dog. Um, but just know it's going to take a while. And I would definitely say that just like with human hair, grooming regularly or brushing human hair regularly and keeping it in good condition will make a really big difference. So, you know, taking the time to keep it untangled is actually going to help you to grow their hair out longer and thicker. So if you let their hair get into little snarls and knots and things like that, it could definitely break the hair and damage the hair and things like that. So the, the more that you very gently do groom her, the better um, of a difference that it will make. Um, I should look and see if I can see what products you have in Germany. Um, I know Isle of Dogs is also a really nice product line. Um, there's a lot of different nice product lines. I'm not sure what would be available in Europe, but you're welcome to ask me about any product lines and I can I can try to look them up and you know see what I think. Can I brush you now? You're gorgeous, you little sassy girl. Come on, sassy. <laughs> it's time for Lola to be groomed. And Per usual, I set down my comb somewhere and I'm not sure where I did set it down. So let's let's look for that comb. Are you sitting on my comb? Come here. Does everybody need to sit right behind me? Do you want to sit here? Okay, hold on one second. I'm getting another comb. Well, I thought I was getting another comb, but I have some, oh, here it is. Does anyone else lose things like exactly where you're sitting and just have them slide? I feel like I'm always losing things that I need. Um, I have my comb back. Um, let's see, how many times should I feed my Yorkie? Um, so she's gonna be very small when you get her, Leah. I personally, when I got Lola and she was little like that, I fed her four times a day. I think I would feed her three or four times a day because you need to be really careful just to keep their, their blood sugar from dropping down at all. So you just need to make sure to feed her very, very regularly. Um, and it also says, uh, when I get my puppy, I want to make a YouTube channel to two. You want to make a YouTube. Good job using the correct form of two. That's very smart, Leah. Um, that's a great idea. If your parents let you, I think, why not? Um, I think YouTube channels are really, really fun, and I would love to see some videos of your puppy for sure. Um, and Coco the hamster, hello. Do you have a specific method um, or technique for potty training? I actually do. Um, so I, one of the most popular videos that everybody wanted me to make was, I, I mean, people must have asked me, I don't even know how many times, but everybody was asking me to make a potty training video. So I actually have a video up um, that I made about house training Yorkies. And that is how I house trained my Yorkies. So I would definitely, if you can watch that video, that would be great. It's, I feel like it's, it's a pretty long video because there's a lot to house training Yorkies, but I put that video together and I think it's a really good one to watch. So definitely take a look at that video. Hello, I think it's, is it LJ? I think it's Presbrook. Love your channel. My family will be getting a girl Yorkie puppy and can't wait. Where can we find the Amazon link? Um, so I'm gonna put some links on this video, but if you look, I've got a bunch of links. Um, I have a small dog accessories video. I also have, and that has a lot of links. I also have, um, I think on a lot of my videos, I've got links. So the way to find the links is actually to go into the descriptions on my videos. But later on today, I will I will start putting the links together and I'll actually also add them onto my story time. Um, I think before I didn't wanna to add too many links to videos, 
but I feel like where people are asking for the links all the time, it would probably be helpful for me just to have as much as I can at the bottom of a video. So you could just find it all really easily where you can pretty much find whatever you need on any video. I actually have that. So for my hair salon, I have a page called my favorite things and I link to all of my favorite businesses in Boston because I found that I was making the same recommendations to clients all the time. And it was just easier to, I'm very, very choosy about things that I use for beauty and things that I use for Yorkies. So I, basically just try to put all my links into one place. Um, and this is kind of a funny thing. So I'm actually, I was just talking to one of my clients at the hair salon. What is going on back here? Is that Alfie? I was just talking to one of my clients at the hair salon and she was telling me that I manufacture these little, they're little black makeup towels and they're bleach safe. And they're, they're like the size of a large wash washcloth. So you can take your makeup off or, you know, dry your face without getting makeup on your towel. But she told me that she keeps a stack of them in her mudroom and she uses them to wipe off her dog's paws in the winter time because they don't get stained. They look nice and neat and um, they wash really well. So I might actually put those up too. It's so funny because of course that was not their intended use, but it does work really well. And I, I actually do the same thing. So I was surprised that that is what she has been doing, but I thought I should link to those as well. They're, they're great. Come on, Wills, we're gonna flip you over. Um, Sharon, is there a certain harness that I recommend? My sparkle joy is two pounds. So yes, I love the buddy belt harness. Um, and you know, there's not, I'm, I'm actually going to contact the company because I, when I go on Amazon, there's not a lot of good links for buddy belt, but all of my dogs wear buddy belt harnesses. And so first of all, the, the construction is fantastic. They're super soft. They feel comfortable because I, I don't want them to have like you know, something rubbing against their body or, you know, something that's uncomfortable. They look beautiful on my dogs. The leather is really, really soft and they will also personalize them. So I have this really pretty plaid pattern and all of my dogs have the same harness because I like for them to match. And then I get, they will actually put little crystals on the harness. So I have like a little, they set these really pretty crystals on them. Lola gets so mad when I do her legs. Um, so I like that they just sort of, I don't want to say they bedazzled them. It doesn't look tacky. It looks really, really pretty. And so the girls have a little bit of sparkle on their harness. Um, the only funny thing is that I think that they usually offer, like with their sets of harness and leashes, I believe they usually offer a four foot leash. And I like a six foot leash for my Yorkies because I usually put my hand through the loop and then wrap it around my hands. And I, I mean, I want them to be able to walk slightly in front of me. So I had to call the company to order that special combo, but I will try to get a link so I can actually have, you know, an ambassador link through them because I'm always recommending their harnesses. That's, that's what my dogs have always worn. They're very secure. They're very durable. Um, you know, they're, I usually get them a new set. I probably get them a new set every two years. They last for a long time and then I get them a fresh set, but not because they're worn out, just because I want something that like looks really good and fresh and things like that. Um, Claudia, what should we expect when bringing a Yorkie home? Do you have any recommendations? Yes. Um, so I actually made a video and it is about the first day that you bring a Yorkie home. And that video has so many different specific things. I mean, there's there's so many different things that I do recommend that it's almost like hard to say them in one in one quick thing. But you know, I think it's like having you know get your dog insurance. That's the most important thing. Um, period. Um, have your food ready. Make sure it's the same food that your dog has been eating. And if you do need to transition your dog into a new food, you're going to want to do it very very slowly. Um, make sure to have something that will contain your puppy to keep it safe, whether it's a crate, a kennel, um, a playpen, you know, somewhere that if you're going to take a shower, you can put your dog in there and not worry about it, you know, chewing on electrical cord or, you know, and, and also so that you can keep it contained so that you can house train it. So there's a lot more. And I definitely encourage you to check out that video for sure. Um, but those are some of the most important things. And, and one of the really important things in the video too, is just know that, it is not, Lola, you are so sassy. It is not unusual for a, um, 
a puppy to almost like they will howl and oh uh, oh I think is the cat going into the kitchen they will howl and sometimes almost scream the first night and I think it's really important to be understanding that your Yorkie is separated from its pack, which is the family that it grew up with. And just know that your dog is not being bad. It's a it's a natural instinct where they're actually, it's, it's sad, but they're calling out to their family because they want their family to come and find them. So I always just say to people like, please be understanding that your, your dog is frightened and just try to be really soothing to it. Um, when I brought my little Lola home, when she was a baby, I had her sleep in a playpen the first night and what I did was I actually put, this was, I mean, she's almost eight years old now, but I put, you know, like a, a mat down on the floor and I slept on the floor next to the playpen just because I thought, well, geez, she's so scared. I mean, this is like a really, this is a really big thing for her. And she did scream and cry a lot, but I was like, I'm right here. It's okay. Um, and she eventually did go to sleep. Um, I think the neighbors probably did hate me. I live in a city, so people can always hear, but it, it is what it is. It wasn't forever. So um, let's see. Oh, thank you, Sharon. I'm, I'm glad that I was answering your question. Um, Miss Funky thanks, says, thanks for taking the time to answer, Megan. I've watched every video. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Thank you. And I get so much useful information because you are very passionate in what you do and also very honest. Um, it says you are a powerful woman, not only because you care so much about your animals, but with your beauty line and also the fitness competition you did well. I'm impressed and please never stop. Thank you so much. I have so many different things that I do. And it's really funny because um, I actually started just doing my Yorkie videos because I love talking about them. And I know so much about them and I did not know that people would enjoy it so much, but I was really excited that they did. Um, I do a lot of things with beauty. And um, for those of you that don't know, I have been weightlifting since I was, so I'm 44 years old. I'll be 45 in July. And I've been weightlifting since I was an athlete growing up in school. Um, and it's just a really big part of my life, wellness and fitness and, um, and all of those things. And so I just, I started getting, I, I've always been into it, but because of some of the shutdowns in Boston, I couldn't go to the gym and didn't really feel like myself, um, and was doing some stuff at home, but I'm really, really happy and grateful to be back in the gym. And, um, I have an online beauty store with healthy products. Um, and then of course I've got my my hair salon on Newbury street. So I've got a lot of different stuff going on and I just, I enjoy all of it. And I, I think it all ties together. So it's all, it's all really important stuff and, and I enjoy all of it, but I love to bring the dog wellness and happiness stuff to you guys. So thanks for the compliment. I'm really glad that you like the different stuff I do. I still mix in different kinds of videos because it is my passion. So for those of you that don't know, um, I'm a hair colorist and I trained all over the world. I trained in London, LA, Miami, New York. Um, I got the uh, Best of Boston Award for being the best hair colorist in Boston more than one time. And um, that is like another passion of mine is I love bringing people's natural beauty out because if you have the wrong hair color, my hair color is naturally is like a brown, dark, dark, dark brown, almost brownish black. And if I had that hair color, it actually wouldn't look so good. Um, so I think finding the natural beauty for everything is really important. Even it sounds so silly, but even when you brush your dog's hair and you have it really healthy and you get them a great haircut, you make your dogs look more beautiful. And I don't know, I, I enjoy even making my dogs look more beautiful. So it's really fun. <laughs> um, Sharon, I completely agree. I love all things that bling and dazzle too. It's so funny when I got the rhinestones on the harness, I wasn't, I, they're, they're actually crystals. They're not rhinestones. They're, how do you say it? Is it Swarovski crystals? I'm not sure, but um, so they're really nice crystals and they look really fabulous. And I love, I love the sparkle and the dazzle. Have I heard of litter box training with pine pellets using a sifting system? I have heard of that. Um, I so I have I have a litter box for the cat. Um, I don't have that for the dogs. So I will say this condo that I'm in now. My husband and I bought this condo um, recently. We moved in in August, and I was really disappointed because when we did the inspection. They there wasn't a great washer and dryer, but they had one of those all in one washers and dryers and they said that it worked and things like that. And I'm very 
into eco-friendly things and washing things and not using disposable things. So I used to use these really great, it sounds kind of gross. I thought it was gross at first. Um, Simba, no, Simba's eating my plant. Hang on one second, guys. I'll show you. He is, so Simba is over. I'm just going to turn you to where this little troublemaker is. Simbers, you're not allowed on the table. I'm going to go take that cat down from my table. No, no, get down. Go on. So when my kitten has been eating my plants, which means I'm just going to adjust this again, which means that I'm, oop, and there's dog hair on my comb. Um, I may not be buying some new plants for a while because apparently kittens like to ruin plants, but that's okay. I just don't want him to get sick from them. Um, <laughs> definitely look for it, Claudia, and still let me know if you have any questions, but I think that that will be really helpful. Um, I try to be pretty complete with my videos. And I feel like sometimes when I'm chatting, I'm always happy to answer anything, but um, I did some different things. Like I also put, um, I put a little like blanket in my bed before Lola came home. So it smelled like me. And then I put it into her little playpen. So she would always have something with her that smelled like me and was soothing. And she would just start to dogs really work off of scent. So I just wanted her to feel nice and safe. And I believe I have it in that video too, I also got her this little teddy bear. Do not attack Alfie, don't be mean. I got her a little teddy bear that had a heartbeat. Um, and I thought that that would keep her from feeling too lonely when she was in her kennel. Um, so I think that was nice too. Um, but the main thing is just have it be a calm day. Like a lot of people, when they get a new puppy, they want to have a lot of people over to see their new animal, but I think that would be scary for a new animal. So just try to make it a quiet day, a soothing day, you know, just, just think about how I feel so bad if he bothers Alfie again, he, he really likes to, to harass Alfie lately. Um, but just make it a really soothing day. Like when I brought home Simba, my kitten, I just tried to make it the most calming day possible. Um, the dogs were going crazy and barking. So probably no matter how calm I tried to make it, it still wasn't as calm as it should have been. Um, but it was a really good day. When I go to the groomer, what haircut style do I ask for? And hello, Kiana. So you know, it's funny, I don't exactly ask for a style. What I do is I treat it the same as if I were going to the human hairstylist and I make sure to give them a picture. Um, and I think the thing to keep in mind with when you do give a groomer a picture is I, I give them a picture and like, I don't think it would hurt to like write down a few bullet points of what you wanted. So when I give them the picture, I had their, <laughs> I just see the cat in the background. It's so funny. But um, I just said that I wanted to make sure that their little faces were rounded and that their hair was not cut all around their eyes so that it could be pulled up in a ponytail. Um, so I guess I was kind of specific, but I showed them a picture. Um, I recently, um, I switched groomers. I didn't switch places, but um, the lovely gal that had been grooming my Yorkies for several years, um, she was living in Boston and she had, you know, two babies and she, moved back to Maine because I think it, when there was the shutdown, I think it was really hard for her to stay in the city. So um, what I did is I took pictures of my actual dogs for Vicky, who grooms them now, and just kind of explained what I, what I liked about it. And I also just said, um, you know, I know that you don't groom Yorkies all the time. So just know that I appreciate that you're doing this and it's okay. I don't expect it to be perfect. Um, I know you're sort of learning how to groom my dog. So, you know, don't, don't feel like this picture is, um, how do I say it? And I'm once again, looking for my comb, but I said, please don't feel like I'm pressuring you by giving you this picture. I'm just giving you an example and I'm just happy that you're grooming my dogs and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll get it more right that every time she actually got it, it was just perfect anyway, but I knew she was a little bit nervous about grooming my dogs and I didn't want her to be nervous because my most important thing is just that someone treats my dogs really well. Um, so that basically, that is how I approach going to the groomer. Um, I've been to a lot of different groomers. My biggest thing is 
just this is the best place I've ever been to. Um, it's It can be hard to find a good dog groomer and you just want to make sure that they're going to be really nice to your dog because of course they have your dog and you're not there. So um, that is what I do um, and make sure to tip your groomer well because they're taking care of your baby. So um, tip that groomer because they're doing a great job and they have your dog and you're not there. Um, I guess with Teddy though, I will say he had a teddy bear haircut. So Teddy's hair was different. He didn't have a ponytail. Um, he had like a little, I don't know if I can, let me see if I can show you guys. Cause you, I think you, some of you guys may have seen Teddy and some of you may not have, I can just hold my phone up so you can I have a Teddy album. He was the cutest dog in the entire world. Um, <laughs> So cute. Let's see, I just have to find a good picture of him. I don't know if you guys can see, um, but this is, Teddy had, like he was always smiling and so he didn't have the ponytail, um, but he was super adorable. And I'll show you another really cute picture of him. Um, this was when he was with Lola, when Lola was little. So he had a different haircut and he also had one ear down. And the reason, by the way, that his ear was down is that when I first got him, I did not brush him enough or get him groomed enough. And his ears were too heavy and one basically fell over and never stood back up. Um, and I have to say that I think it was the cutest thing in the world that that's how he looked. So it was, it wound up being his cutest thing ever. Um, have I heard of... Have I heard of catnip? Um, it looks adorable when cats sniff catnip. So um, definitely I've heard of catnip, but I believe, so a lot of, this is really funny and I didn't know this until I got my kitten. Um, most cats cannot smell catnip until I wanna say they're nine months old. So I do, I actually have some catnip for him that came from the breeder and he didn't react to it at all. What he does react to are he absolutely loves his, um, I have little teaser toys for him. One is actually up on the fireplace. And when I take his teaser toy out, he goes crazy with excitement. It is his favorite, favorite thing in the entire world. So he absolutely loves teaser toys. Um, I want to show you guys a few more of the favorite toys. I know I'm kind of like grooming and chatting and grooming and chatting, but that's of course very, very typical for me. Hi, Poppy. Don't Poppy's down there. I know you're next. I sure didn't forget about you, did I? No, I didn't. Poppy is Lola's real sister from the same litter. I got Poppy when she was a lot older than Lola, but um, they remembered each other. Did I get all your pieces, Lola? I think I did. Um, they remembered each other immediately and they didn't fight. They didn't take any time to like get to know each other. They just were like best friends from minute one, which is really cute. Um, some other cute little toys I have, like I have this little like teeny tiny bunny rabbit. They definitely like this. Um, this is a well, well worn Nyla bone. Um, I've got to look it up. I believe in, oh, gosh, even the cat has been playing with it, I think. But anyway, I've got to look it up. I believe it's the chicken flavor. My dogs go crazy for these. I mean, they are like so great for teething. Um, I think they're indestructible. Although if your dog... I think some dogs with really razor sharp teeth could go through them. In that case, you need to throw it away, but um, they love these. I probably have about nine or 10 of them simply because they're so, so popular. Um, this is a cat toy and my dogs actually love cat toys, but I feel like I have to watch them because some of them are almost so small that um, I worry that they might choke on them. But I think when people have puppies, if it's you know, a good size that could be a good puppy toy as well to get some cat toys. Um, hello, SSTV. Welcome. It says question from a beginner, which I love. Thank you. Should I adopt one Yorkie and another one after one to two years or two at the same time? Um, personally, I would say if you want to be successful bringing in a Yorkie, I would not get two at the same time. I know that a, like, I don't ever want to tell people what to do because, you know, it's, Everybody should do what they want to do. But if people ask me, I'll tell you. Um, I think that training a dog is a lot of work. And sometimes people think, oh, well, you know, as long as I'm doing it anyway, I'll just do it with two. But it's twice as much work and you might not be as 
you just might not be as successful with your training and you might get overwhelmed with two. I think even having one puppy is a lot of work. Um, so I personally would recommend that you get one, you just spend time with that and then see if you even decide that you need to have two. I mean, I, I do think Teddy really liked having another dog with him, but when it was only Teddy, I think that the benefit that Teddy had is that he could go everywhere with me. You really don't want to be brushed, do you? But I just need to get your little, your little bum too. Um, so you know, you might decide you only want one, but definitely if you, if you have that choice, um, just get one because then you're going to be able to give that one, the personalized, specialized attention. And uh, if you have two, I think just adopting one, even like with the kitten day three, I was like, why did I get him? He's so much work. <laughs> I was just really, really tired. So I would think if you did that with two animals, you might get really overwhelmed. Obviously that feeling passed. I knew it was normal, but getting a dog or getting an animal is a lot of responsibility. So I say, Make it, um, make it easier, make it reasonable, and don't overdo it with, you know, too many animals at the same time, and you'll be way more successful. Um, and I'm excited for you to get your, your dog too. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Pop in anytime. I've got a lot of videos that I think will be really helpful for you. I'd love to answer your questions. And, you know, I was, everybody's a beginner at some point, And I think just getting out there and you know, asking questions and being open to learning is the most important thing. And um, obviously get your pet insurance. I know I tell every single person that, but that is your most important thing. Um, don't wait on pet insurance. Get it before you, if you can get it before you get your dog and you'll be really happy that you did. Um, for those of you that don't know, this is Poppy. She is like the sweetest girl. She's my shyest girl and she doesn't always like when I stream, but um, she's okay. I think that I'm doing it today. Um, And let's see, um, this says, I'm thinking about getting a Nyla bone chew, but some reviews said um, some bits that were getting chewed off. Um, I think there's different levels of Nyla bones, I believe. Um, I know when I had a lab years and years ago in my 20s, there were certain Nyla bones that would break down. This Nyla bone has never broken down for me. And if it really, when it does like that one actually looks like it could be thrown away, but I've had those for years and I haven't replaced them. Um, I think it depends on it. I will put up a link to the one that I buy because there are some that are softer and yes, you don't want to get anything that could possibly cause a blockage. That is a great, great question. Um, and it says, sorry, Simba got into the, <laughs> sorry, the plants. And you were saying you did hear about the litter boxing with pine pellets. What were your thoughts? Um, just that, just me personally, I wouldn't want to do a litter box with pellets. Um, I, I like potty pads because either I can use the washable ones and I basically, sorry if it's gross, but I do pick up if they poop on them. I just, I pick it up with toilet paper, throw it in the toilet, flush it down and then just wash them. And that way I'm not ruining something. I'm not, um, throwing something away all the time. So we bought this place and we thought it had a washer and dryer and it doesn't work. And we, just because of the pandemic, we can't renovate our whole bathroom and add a washer and dryer right now. So we've been using disposable ones, which are not my favorite thing. But I mean, if you think that a litter box is a great idea, then do that. But what I like about, you know, potty pads is you can bring them anywhere. So like when I go to Aspen to see my husband, um, sometimes I will take um, usually Alfie is the best traveling dog. So maybe Alfie would go with me and it's really, really easy because I can just throw some potty pads in my suitcase and they're familiar with them. And also you can train your dog to use a potty pad and then say you need to fly with it. And it's, you know, if you have to, I didn't say this, that you can do this, but you can bring it into the bathroom, put a potty pad down, stand on the toilet and they will use it. Um, Alfie travels in his little belly band. But anyway, there's a lot, I just think there's a lot more flexibility if you need to travel because it would be really hard to get that little litter box to go with you for like a hotel room or something. So I think you'll find that potty pads are easier to travel with and just more flexible because sometimes you're not going to be at your home with your Yorkie. And so you want something that they're going to be able to adapt to. And I think a litter box, like I mean, if I wanted to bring my cat somewhere, I think it would be really hard to bring a litter box. So those are just my thoughts for my lifestyle. Um, you know, you do your research and you decide what you think of and what you think is the best. Um, let's see. Okay. I'm going to show you guys a few more things. So this toy is a monkey. 
they don't care about it at all. I should actually get rid of it. Um, everybody was crazy about this toy when I first got it. It was for the cat and they loved all of his toys. Now no one seems to care. So not that popular. Um, no one cares about this. This is one of those toys I was talking about. It says Coco Chunel Prance. It's really cute. It looks like a perfume bottle. None of my dogs play with it. These are all just toys that I should honestly throw away or, or donate, but I don't, I don't know if any dogs want them. This is very popular. It's a little squirrel. It's got a little squeaker. It's very Yorkie sized. This is a great, great toy and they love it. Um, I just want to see a few of their other favorites because there's some very like you never know which one they're going to love, but they're always really, really random. And the thing is like with the toys, it's usually if, um, if another dog or the cat, you know, winds up being interested in a toy, that's when everybody wants that toy. I have a ton of the Kong, um, tennis balls in there. And sometimes they like this. It's a little, obviously a blue octopus. I have two of those just in case they start fighting and oh, Poppy, you little sweetie. She's, she is so good and calm, you guys. Like she's the best dog. Um, but anyway, so sometimes, sometimes they play with that one, but I have to have several because if they start arguing about a toy, there could sometimes they'll get into like a little tiff and that's a disaster. So I don't want that. Um, the name of the lady that does the um, belly bands. So it's under, it's Kiss E Collar. So it's K-I-S-S-E-E -S -S -E, and then Collar, C-O-L-L-A-R. Um, I believe she has a Facebook page now, but she, well, is getting mad at someone. Is it Alfie? What's, what are they fighting about? We're not sure. Oh, do you guys have the cat toy? What are you fighting about? Um, anyway, so she doesn't have a website right now. As soon as she does, I'm going to share it because she makes the best stuff. I'll see if I can find at least a link to her page because so not only do I have her little um, her little belly bands, which I love, but so her kissy collars are actually really nice soft cotton e collars, which are have you guys seen the lampshades that they put on? Like if you maybe get your dog spayed. Well, what's so nice about the kissy collars is that they are nice and soft. And so you don't feel bad for your dog when it's wearing one, because isn't that the worst? Like if Simba is going to be neutered soon, which of course is very important, but instead of wearing a big old lampshade, I can actually have him wear one of the larger dog e-collars. And so he'll be nice and comfortable and he's not going to have a big plastic thing that's hurting him. So anyway, she does a lovely job. I will text her and find out if she has gotten her website up. I feel like websites are such important things these days for sure. Um, And Sharon says, good advice on having one pet at a time. I walk around with my sparkle joy in my arms or in the sling that I have for her when we, or I walked around with her when we got her. I think that's such a nice idea. And I agree, Sharon. I just think it's so much easier. Um, it's so, so much easier. And the other thing, and this is something, and I'm again, so sometimes I'm just bringing up things that I learned and I hope you guys know, I'm not trying to like talk about anything that is, I mean, how do I say it? I'm never trying to bring up sad subjects and things like that, but a lot of people will get two dogs at the same time, or they might even get two dogs from the same litter. And I do have Poppy and Lola and they are from the same litter. But one thing that I never thought about, and this isn't like trying to be I don't know how to say it. I don't want to bring up something sad, but I realized when my dog Teddy was sick and it was very, very hard. And I, I always love taking care of him. So I'm not complaining in any way, but as your dog gets older, sometimes they need a whole lot of care. And I was honored to do that. And it wasn't about not being happy to do it. But what I realized is that if you have two dogs that need the same thing at the same time, that could be very, very hard. And it might be very tiring on you. And also so like my girls, if I'm lucky, they'll live for, oh, I'm sorry, you sneezing. If I'm fortunate, they'll live for the same amount of time. And that's wonderful. But I think the thing that would be hard and would be sad is that they would also get old at the same time. And I would need to give them extra care. And basically, you know, 
losing a losing a dog is the hardest thing in the world and one thing that i didn't think about and i'm not i just feel bad even bringing it up but it's something that i feel like i realized when teddy was passing um was just that oh my gosh it's possible that i could lose lola and poppy someday around the same time if i'm lucky and they both reach a very old age and i was like oh that would be so sad so sorry to bring up something sad but i just thought i would just share that just for people that maybe haven't gotten two dogs at the same time um it's nice to space your dog's ages out because when i lost teddy um and that was two years ago I still had Lola and Poppy and I was so incredibly grateful that I still had Lola and Poppy because they just, I was so sad and I missed Teddy and it's still, um, it's, it still can make me almost like tear up, but it still made me really sad and I, I missed him, but I was so fortunate that I had my girls and I was so glad that I wasn't going through it with two dogs at the same time. Um, so anyway, food for thought. That's my other thing. I say space your dog's ages out because then you won't be taking care of two geriatric dogs at the same time. Um, cause when Teddy was sick, I, you know, I did anything for him and I was up quite a bit during the night. If he got sick, I was cleaning it up and I wanted to sit with him and pet his back and make sure he wasn't by himself. Cause when you're sick, you want your mom. Right. And, um, and then when he, his kidneys were failing, I was taking him to the hospital and I, every, like every other day, I think I took him in to get fluids under his skin. So I would finish work at the salon. I would race home. I wouldn't eat anything. I would just grab my car, put Teddy in the car and go get him his fluids. And I think if I had had two dogs, it would have been physically exhausting. So just food for thought. You always want to think not only for the best time of your dog's life, but also the hardest time of your dog's life. And so kind of I mean, you can't really plan because you don't know when that will be, but, you know, do your best just to, to give yourself some space and time because of course, you know, as wonderful as dogs are, we do sadly reach that time with dogs and it comes too soon. So just make sure that you have plenty of time, you know, getting a dog is for better or for worse. And, and in that, that end of lifetime is a time when you really want to have plenty of time to pamper them and to have every like morsel of time just to love them and you know savor your time with your dogs so that is my my thoughts on that <laughs> um good advice oh this is from christy uh stinson hello christy um do i have any advice on flying with a yorkie Yes, I do. So I have flown, um, I've flown with my Yorkies. And so one, one thing that I would say is first of all, make sure that your Yorkie is so used to their carrier and loves that carrier so, so much so that they're really comfortable. So some people don't use a carrier and then they think they're just going to use it when they are, you know, going to go on a flight. And I think that that's a really big mistake to make. So if you're planning on taking a flight, I would absolutely get your dog used to going in its carrier and not just going in it, but loving it, you know, like take it, take it out for a walk in its carrier, you know, take it in its carrier and then do something really fun with it. So, um, my dogs love going in their carrier. And if I'll, I'll show you guys on another live, because I'm actually, I'm going to run outside soon and go for our little walk. Cause it's getting, um, it's sort of that, you know, the sun is going to go down in about a half an hour in Boston. But um, anyway, so get your dog used to its carrier. Um, with Alfie, my boy, I also, um, so I put, you could either put a Pampers, like an actual baby diaper on your dog if it's a male. That way, if it has to go, um, if you get it used to them before, it will just go in its Pampers. Then you just have an extra Pampers in your bag. You change that Pampers. Um, obviously, don't change the Pampers you know, I, I know I don't need to tell you guys this, but don't change the pampers, like sitting at your seat, take your dog to the bathroom because that's going to gross. I don't even know if you're allowed to take your dog out anymore anyway, but you know, take your dog to the bathroom in its bag, change it, what have you. Um, that works really well. You can get pampers for girls too. I don't think that they work that well, but you can, um, you know, just get uh, one thing that you'd want to do is probably practice and um get used to like this is so funny but i used to go into our tiny so we have a tiny second bathroom and i would go in there and stand on the toilet and put a potty pad down and get lola to go to the bathroom that way i could sneak her into the airplane bathroom and have her go to the bathroom in there i don't know what it's like now for you know everything is different i really haven't traveled with all the 
um, virus stuff that's been going on. So I don't know what it's like right now. Um, but um, that those are some of the things that I would recommend. Um, we're really lucky because we, I have a client that is my client and my husband's client, and he, he flies his plane back and forth to Aspen. So sometimes he lets, it's, we're like terrible, like stowaways on his plane, but um, that is nice because I can take a dog and it can sit in my lap and things. So that's kind of nice. Um, and this says, do I let my Yorkies and Sim, do I, do I let my Yorkies and Simba stay unwatched? Um, are they already friends or, and do they accept the cat? I'm still scared that my cats will scratch our little Yorkie in the eyes, um, but they love each other and play. So um, I do leave them out. I was really, really careful with it though. And I introduced them slowly. Um, at first, what I did is I didn't leave them out together. I left Simba in the back bedroom. Um, but eventually I have a gal um, named Skylar who helps me out during the day when I'm at work. And so what, what we did at first is as, as I was leaving for work, she would arrive. And then the first few days, she made sure to be here the entire time. And then she would leave 10 minutes before I got home. So they were together for 10 minutes once we knew that they weren't going to kill each other. Um, and the other thing too, is that I trim Simba's fingernails with, um, with, or not, I guess they're not fingernails. I'm sorry. They are cats have claws, not fingernails, but I trim his claws with fingernail clippers and I do it every single week. And so that makes it so that he couldn't really injure them with his claws. I mean, he could scratch them a little bit, but he wouldn't like scratch their eyes out. Um, even though they're sassy and even though they play, um, they don't, they really don't hurt each other. Um, they just play really nicely. We had a really slow introduction period. And I think that that was really helpful. Um, so guys, I loved talking to you guys today. I don't know if you have any last questions before I run out to take my walk, but I really love talking to you. And I think that this was a really good time to do it as well. Um, so I will definitely schedule my next live before I put it up so you guys will know when it's coming. But I believe it's going to be next Sunday at the same time. I may look at my schedule and do another one because I feel like we have so much to talk about. And I just don't ever think I get to everybody's questions or everything that um, I want to talk about. So I, I will probably be popping on here again. I'm going to think about when the other live would be. It might be on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, um, but I will schedule it beforehand so that you guys know and you can make it for sure. Um, just wanted to look at this too before I go. Um, hi, Carla. How are you? It says, thank you so much for all of the advice. Megan, love your channel. Thank you. Next month, we will bring home our baby Yorkie and bring her home and all these tips help us. That's so exciting. You're definitely in the nesting stage, which is like, it's it's the best time in the world. It's so fun to look forward to getting your Yorkie. Um, and it's going to be wonderful when you bring your Yorkie home and planning is going to make it that much wonderful. So that much more wonderful. Sorry. So great job planning now. That's really important to do. Um, do I brush the puppy's teeth? I do. Um, I feel like it's the only one that's really good about it is Poppy. Um, Alfie fights so much, so I don't ever feel like he lets me brush his teeth well. And for those of you that don't know, this is so sad, but Lola has no teeth. Even though this is her sister and her sister Poppy has lots of teeth, Lola doesn't have teeth. Um, she just had really weak teeth and a very crowded mouth because she's so little. She's just the, she's like my little, um, if you guys ever watched Little Women, there was like a very unhealthy little sister. And I feel like that's Lola. Like she's so cute, but she was the run. She has very tangly hair and she had very rotten teeth. Um, so I cried when they took out her teeth because it, it, I was like, can you do implants? And no, they don't do implants for dogs. Um, anyway, I do brush the other dog's teeth. And then my work days when I'm busy, Skylar brushes the dog's teeth for me. She's like my dog nanny because um, I hate to leave them alone for too, too long. Um, hi, Tiffany. How are you? It's nice to see you here. It says, hello. Thanks for doing the live. I enjoyed it and I learned a lot. Thank you so much. I really look forward to doing another live with you guys soon. I really appreciate it. I'm still trying to figure out. I just, um, I just monetized last week for those of you that don't know. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out the ads. My mom said there were some super, super long ads. Um, and 
Like I, you know, obviously do whatever you feel comfortable with. I have YouTube premium, so mine doesn't run any ads. It's eleven ninety nine a month, and I love it because it doesn't run ads. Um, but also where you can, I totally appreciate it when you can watch ads because, of course, that is what um, I don't know if you guys know, but that is how people actually make YouTube their job, that people watch their ads and things like that. So that's how people can turn YouTube into their full time job, which is my my goal for sure. Um, but thank you so much for stopping by. You guys are amazing and supportive and I appreciate you. And I'm going to bring these little babies out to the park because they are so excited. You're such a shy girl. I will talk to you guys later. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday and I look forward to seeing you really soon. Bye guys. Just uh, send me any other questions and things afterwards. This video will be posted and um, later on by nine o'clock tonight, I'm going to add those links into the description of this video. So feel free to check back and just if you don't see something on there that you want to see, please just tell me and then I will go ahead and edit it and I will add that in too. Bye, guys.